Hey guys, welcome back to the Chess Yard. This is Dhir Bagga, and today I'll be taking you through one of my games which I played three weeks back against a similar rated player. And he he started off with English opening, uh, which is typical c c4 uh, pawn c4 and then knight c3, and trying to take control of the center. Uh, I'll show the best response that we can give to such kind of an opening. So yeah, let's start uh, uh, c4. And I start off with e5. Uh, the main idea here was uh, trying to block his uh, next move, which which might be d4, trying to take the control of the center. So uh, good initiative from Black here, uh, not letting the White go ahead with his plans. He takes out Knight c3. Now again, he, uh, a good solid opening for uh, White. He's he will now start moving his pawns in front of the King and Queen. Uh, now I also take out my knight just in case uh, I, I I have to protect the uh, d4 square uh, from two a couple of attacks. So I have a pawn attacking there and the knight as well. Now uh, White starts off uh, his uh, e pawn, moving it to e3, uh, and the next move, which is pretty obvious from here, it will be d4 and trying to take control of the center. Even if I go for the exchange, he will he can also exchange with his. Uh, e3 pawn and then he will have two center pawns uh, against mine which will be one only so he gets the early advantage if he does that uh, so i take out my bishop here uh, to the c5 square uh, trying to make sure that if the exchange happens uh, i do not lose out on a pawn extra or give the complete control of the center so now he takes out and develops his uh, second knight on the f3 square pretty standard move from right here and then we also develop a knight uh, on the f6 square. Uh, this is just taking out your minor pieces on the board initially so that uh, you can control your middle game well if your pieces are there outside, not just uh, sitting inside. And now he tries to break the center. Uh, a good move for black because uh, now he can take control of the center. He has the knight protecting the, uh, the d4 square as well. So additional support there. Uh, I have to capture. I cannot, uh, if I move my uh, bishop here, uh, would not be a good move. So I have to capture. He captures back with the pawn. And now oh, we have to move our bishop. There's no other option. Now the, uh, the bishop can either come back uh, to the e7 square. If he comes back to the d6, he will be blocking the queen's path. Uh, if he comes back to uh, b6, that's that's a good option. But then, what if the opponent moves uh, next uh, the c5 pawn? Uh, then it blocks my bishop again. Then I have to move my bishop again uh, to a5, and then uh, he can remove the pin as well from the king by getting his dark square bishop. So uh, trading off dark bishop, uh, dark square bishops so early. Uh, didn't seem like a good idea at the beginning, so I tried to delay it for as long as possible. I tried to pin the knight uh, by moving the bishop directly to uh, b b4, not making making sure that his pawns are not advanced further by pushing my bishop uh, one step by one. Uh, then he tries to push my knight behind uh, by moving his uh, d5 pawn, and now to move knight. And the only good square I could find at that point of time was. Uh, e7 because uh, both e5 and e, uh, d4 are protected with the knight so i cannot go that side if i go towards uh, the a5 then i cannot con i am not doing a my knight is not doing anything there but just sitting Id idly and there's no role play of our knight from there that square so i have to come come here also one more advantage here was now I can castle to the king side because um, my uh, e file is also closed by moving that knight. Uh, he also is planning to castle now. He has moved his uh, bishop to the uh, e2 square, and then I try to block it. Uh, I try to block the center pawn, uh, and even that makes an empty square for the uh, light square bishop to come out uh, eventually. So pawn uh, d6, uh, not a bad move, uh, I, I would suggest. And then he castles to safety. Now computer suggesting he could have kept his queen first, uh, give me a check from there. Uh, and that could have been a good move because uh, I cannot protect the check apart from uh, 
uh, the bishop here if i place my bishop then my uh, on on the c on the d uh, d7 square he, he captures my uh, dark square bishop for free so yeah he missed that move and i now capture the knight because i i saw that move now uh, so yeah a bit delayed i saw it but he also was willing to castle and first get to a safety square for his knight and then go, uh, for his king and then attack uh, then he has to capture back. Uh, now, one good thing here is his uh, pawns in the C file are doubled. Uh, doubled pawns are are not good for the pawn structure to continue. Uh, but since it's uh, sort of a middle uh, middle file itself, so we can live with it. Uh, if pawns are doubled on the uh, A or the H rank um, H file, then that there's a problem. So now I. Uh, Develop my bishop. Uh, the only possible good square I felt at that time, uh, that point of time, was g4. Uh, I could have castled first, uh, but my idea was uh, let me pin the knight there. Uh, if he tries to you now uh, exchange also, then I'm happy because his light square bishop will also be gone. Uh, he, because now he has uh, both the bishops, I need one of the bishops to be gone from the game because a bishop pair is very deadly. So now he pins my knight on the f6 uh, square by moving his uh, bishop to g5. Uh, I try and uh, remove the uh, knight from the uh, e7 to g6. The idea behind it was uh, now if he captures the knight, I can capture with the queen back. Uh, my queen will also be developed. And also if I hadn't moved uh, the knight there, he could have captured my knight on f6 first and then my pawn structure would have been spoiled if I take take back from the uh, g7 pawn there. Now he aligns his uh, rook in the e file. Next move is very obvious. He will move his bishop away. Uh, he can keep it anywhere and that will be a check uh, to the black side. So have to castle now. So yes, I castle. Now at this point of situation, uh, Stockfish suggests that the game is in balance. Uh, it's 0-0 zero, zero, uh, uh, evaluation as per Stockfish. So yeah, now whosoever plays better from here would change the game. Uh, he moves uh, the H3 pawn, uh, trying to uh, move my, my bishop from there. And noticing that uh, my light square bishop is not, uh, is not very useful here because uh, it's not eyeing the king side. Uh, I thought of exchanging it uh, with the knight because his knight can further come up in the uh, in the e5 square later on. He can even go for the exchange with my knight uh, uh, via moving to uh, h4. So yeah, a couple of good squares were there for the knight. So I thought of eliminating it from the game. Uh, he takes back with the bishop. Uh, now he has a bishop pair, but I also have a knight pair. Uh, I I prefer playing with the knights. Uh, it's, it's one of my strong points in the game. So I thought uh, it is fair enough. He If he's even good with bishop pair, I, I think I can control with my knight pair. Uh, so now I start moving my knight uh, to the e5 square. Now I'm threatening the bishop. I'm threatening the c4 pawn, uh, which is uh, not protected as of now, which he protects now. Uh, no other option. He don't want to give his pawn for free. I uh, develop my queen uh, to the d7 square, uh, to the e7 square, sorry, uh, just in case uh, I have to uh, attack the center as well. Uh, I'll, my next plan was to get the rook as well uh, aligned on the e file. Uh, so he challenges my knight straight away. Now this uh, I consider as a bad move right now because A, his rook is not there on the f file. B, uh, that removes protection from the king side as well. Now he has opened one of the diagonals uh, for, for king uh, also. If I move my, my knight from here, uh, his uh, king is not protected much with the pawn structure, which was earlier the case. So I get my knight back. Uh, now I got it back on the uh, d7, whereas uh, computer is suggesting I could have got back it to g6. Uh, g6, I thought, what if he moves his pawn one more step ahead? Uh, on the f file then i have to again move my knight somewhere and probably then i have i would have 
come back to the same file, same place where I was initially, which is the E5 square. So yeah, I could have done that, uh, but made more sense to come to this file and then probably the idea was to go to the B B6 there and then keep attacking that pawn, which if he moves the bishop, then it can be captured from there. So he now attacks. Uh, there are two attacks. A, he is attacking the queen by a discovery, uh, by moving his bishop from the uh, to the g4 square. Uh, his rook is eyeing the queen. So I have to move the queen here. Uh, also, there is, there is an attack on the uh, uh, knight at d7. So I have to make sure that both are protected wherever I keep the queen next. So I kept it on the d8 square, uh, making sure that if he captures my knight, I can capture it back. If he, uh, um, he, he can get his queen now uh, on the d, d4 square is what computer suggesting. But then still I have two protections uh, on, the, on the f6 square. So nothing to worry there. I can control that. He goes for the capture first. Uh, now I have... I cannot capture with the knight here because if I capture my queen will be hanging there. So I capture with the queen. Now he captures uh, with the knight, uh, the captures the knight with his bishop. And the idea being simple, if I capture back, my g file will be open, which is in front of my king, which uh, gets my king out of his comfort zone. So, but I cannot leave the piece hanging there. So I captured back. And then he goes for a check here, uh, which he could have avoided by moving the queen to uh, d4, ideally. Uh, then he could have cap maybe threatened to capture my uh, f3, f6 uh, pawn, but he tried to go for the check directly, which was eyeing my queen as well. So I have to take it. So I take, take back and now Stockfish is again suggesting it's a draw game from here, unless somebody uh, pulls it out. Uh, he captures back with the pawn. Now another thing to be noticed is I have uh, one double pawn at on the f file. He has uh, two double pawns on the g uh, and on the c file. So double pawns are not good, as I told earlier. And now my motive from here on was to exchange the rooks and then go for the uh, end game and try to clinch it from there. So I try and get my inactive rook, which was on a8 to e8, uh, trying to exchange it. And he didn't capture it because if I uh, if he captures it, then I can I get to capture on the e file again uh, with my f8 rook, and then the e file belongs to the dark pieces, which is my side. Um, so you generally don't capture the empty file if if you see that the opponent also gets to take the control later on. So I start moving my king towards the center. Uh, he tries to block my king here so that I cannot go further ahead. So I move my h pawn first so that he, he also cannot move his g pawn and then he captures which I believe was a mistake uh, Computer also suggesting that uh, he should not have captured this. He goes for the capture I captured back on the e file now e5 belongs to me and he gives me an offer to exchange now and Just to look at the evaluation here stockfish is saying that it's point one in the favor of white very minutely but yes, it is in favor because the problem here was my king cannot go towards the king's side and the pawns are blocking my king. These two pawns are not helpful. This is not helpful anymore. And so I have to go to the right side towards the A file and then start moving my pawns here, break something here and then go because even the E file, I cannot uh, get my king because these two pawns will not, the pawns on F5 and D5 will not let me go through. So if I go for the exchange right away, it's not in my favor. So I move my rook to the e5 square. The idea being if he captures, I fix my the double pawns uh, by capturing back with the f6 square. And that's what happened. Uh, he missed the trick here. He should have not uh, go, gone for this capture, but rather moved, it, moved his a5 pawn uh, so that it, he can delay that uh, the move which he gave me right away. And now I capture back with the uh, my my f pawn. Now my pawns are better. Uh, the pawn structure is very nice, uh, and it will be tough for the opponent to control from here. Also, Stockfish is now saying that the game is in my favor with 3.7 points, which is a very good evaluation at the end game. Uh, he starts moving his king. Uh, I also go towards the center. 
now he blocks uh, there is no other square from where i can go uh, and then he starts moving his a pawn i blocked this f uh, f5 pawn by moving f6 the idea was he should not go ahead from here and make it a pass pawn he keeps moving his uh, a pawn he has other no other move actually if he moves something else he goes for a uh, toss his his king is protecting the uh, the g4 pawn already if he moves his king the uh, king uh, that pawn will be gone and what he can do is probably move the c uh, the c5 pawn uh, the pawn to c5 but then again a capture is on the card so he didn't want to break the situation as long as possible so i tried to break it from the h5 pawn he captures i captured back and then he gives me a check with it uh, and now i have a square where i can easily land so i land there on the g5 now i don't have to move my king i have to wait for opponent to make mistake and then i can capture the g4 pawn and then proceed in, uh, towards the center and promote to queen he tries to move a pawn again i block it simple he now tries to negotiate uh, the giveaway he is not trying to uh, leave that g pawn because he knows that i can enter so i start moving my e pawn now which is empty because he i i fixed my pawn structure there uh, when the rooks were exchanged so that that move was very significant in winning this game uh, and now he moves uh, the c5 pawn i capture it not letting it come ahead then he blocks my uh, c5 pawn with, by moving c4 i start moving my e pawn further so that he has to go towards it he moves one step uh, and to the f3 square i move it one more giving away that pawn so that i can capture the remaining ones he takes it i capture the g pawn he comes back i capture the f pawn and now he's trying to just block my king from going further ahead so i started going towards the other pawns he tried to block me here i started moving the f5 he is going to protect that pawn uh, which i cannot go as of now until unless he removes uh, he goes away from the uh, third rank so he stay tries to stay there and i start moving my pawn again now he has to be pushed back as soon as he goes back i go to the d4 square now i will capture the armor other pawns and win it from there easily he tries to block my f pawn i capture his c pawn and then i capture the other pawn as well now he has only one pawn i have four uh, computer says it's mate in 13 from here uh, he moves i start taking my uh, c pawn ahead and then he resigns so yeah interesting game i must say uh, the game changing point here was uh, when he took the rook uh, that was not uh, a good move from him uh, he didn't notice that i can come back uh, to my uh, to a good square there uh, after the exchange uh, so yeah not a good move for him there otherwise the game was hanging neutrally uh he lost it uh just at the place where he could have hold on for some more time and this was the changing move uh till then uh it was uh, hanging in the draw uh zero evaluation and after he takes it goes completely on the black's favor so again another lesson that do not exchange and do not go for the break point when computer when you see it's a draw situation uh, also a trick here uh, which i implemented by uh, not exchanging but keeping my uh, rook on the e e5 square so that my pawn structure gets fine and i get a pawn uh, on the center file which is open so this can be implemented in our games uh, let me know how you uh, find this video and try and experiment it you can play with me anytime um, my uh, chess.com and lee chess profile ids are there in the description below thanks for watching and i hope it was helpful take care bye bye